Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So today I'm sharing with you a mixed media shadow box frame that I have been commissioned to make for a customer. A uh, customer is called Lauren and she saw some of the shadow boxes that I had on my website for sale a while ago. She'd watched some of the videos and she sent me an email asking me to make one just for her. So this is the shadow box frame that I've created just for Lauren. So this is the frame in its raw state. As you can see, I've got baseboard covering the glass so you're not getting a reflection of the camera above my desk. It's seven inches across at its widest point and the baseboard is six inches, or just slightly smaller than six inches. And the baseboard is what we're going to be working on to build up our main focal point. And as you can see, I have made a mark on the back so I know which way up is top. So to get started, I'm using the fine modeling paste from Indigo Blue, which I'm going to put a large dollop on my desk. Yes, that is a real word. And that's what I'm going to be using with this stencil. This is the new Cogs and Gears stencil, again from Indigo Blue. Everything I'm going to be using, or the majority of stuff that I'm going to be using on this canvas is from Indigo Blue, because I'm also going to be using this same project as a design team project that's going to go on their YouTube channel as well. And as you can see, all I'm doing is just using the spatula to scrape the modelling paste through the stencil onto the baseboard. I've not prepared the baseboard in any way, I haven't painted any, any gesso on it, uh, I'm just using it exactly as it is. And once I've got enough of the modelling paste onto the baseboard, uh, I'm also then going to swap over and grab another stencil. This is the new Damaged Damask stencil, again from Indigo Blue. And I'm just going to use the remaining bits and pieces of that modelling paste. Um, I'm just put some of that Damask pattern through in the other areas on my baseboard. So if you've used modelling paste before, you'll know that it does take a while to dry. Even if you heat it with a heat gun, sometimes it can take quite, a, quite some time to dry, depending on the thickness that you actually put down. Now, I'm putting it on pretty thick, um, so I will need to give it a real good heat time and let it stand for a while before I do anything with it. So what I'm going to do is I will heat it, and then I'll put it to one side, and then I'm going to bring the frame in and do the same thing again on the frame. And just so you're not looking at a reflection of my camera which is above my desk, I've put this piece of paper just on the glass to stop the glare. So using the damaged damask stencil again, which I have cleaned, I've just washed it and then brought it back, I'm just going to use that modelling paste which has still been sitting on my desk, I haven't cleaned that away, this isn't a fresh batch, it's exactly the same one. And I'm just going to apply the modelling paste through the stencil around the outside of the frame.
And again, now that I'm happy with the amount of detail that's on the outside of the frame, I'm going to grab the heat gun, give it a bit of a blast, make sure that the top section or the top layers of the modelling paste are dry, and then I'm going to put it to one side and leave it to dry um, for a good couple of hours so that I know that it is perfectly set and dry before I do anything else with it. Because of time constraints, I had to make some of my elements for this frame beforehand. Now I've used the Mod Podge um, silicon mould with the crown, and I've also used a skull mould that I purchased off eBay, and I've actually poured some plaster of Paris, which I also got from Indigo Blue. This is the Indigo Blue plaster of Paris, and I did these the day before because I wanted to make sure I could leave them overnight to dry thoroughly. My other elements that I used were some grunge board, cogs and gears that I punched out using the Tim Holtz Alterations Gadget Gears Steel Die. This is um, just run through my big shot and I'm also using the Super Thick Slap It On which is a strong gel medium. This is a gloss gel medium and I'm just going to butter the backs of my elements using a spatula and stick them down onto my baseboard. So where I've buttered the back with the gel medium and I've squeezed down, some of the gel medium has come out from the side. So I'm just using a very small brush and I'm just brushing away any excess that I don't want to be on show. Because if it dries, it'll stay there, obviously. Um, although it goes completely clear, it, I don't want that mass there um, because it will hide some of the detail underneath. So I'm just cleaning it up with that small brush. And as long as you wash the brush straight away afterwards, there'll be no issues with it. So here I'm just buttering the back of the final crown element and that's going to be stuck so that it's floating just above the skull. And now I just have to wait for that to dry. Everything is now dry, it's about an hour later, so I'm bringing out my indigo blue black gesso and I'm going to cover the entire of the baseboard with the black gesso. Now because this is kind of a boring process, literally watching paint dry, I'm going to show you a little bit of it and then I'm going to jump to the end. So I'm just going to have a quick tidy up and then I'm going to grab my heat gun and I'm going to give it a really good blast to make sure it's all nice and dry before moving on. 
So I've put that main board to one side now. I'm going to repeat the process for the frame. Now as you can see I've still got the piece of paper down there to make sure that you can't see the reflection of my camera above my desk but it's also serving as a little bit of a mask as well so I have no fear of actually getting any of the gesso on the glass. Kind of kills two birds with one stone so I've done the outside of the frame now I need to do the inside because you will see this so I'm just going to just switch over where the piece of paper is grab the gesso again and then just do the inside of the frame and you'll see me do a little bit of it and once again I'm going to jump to the end. That's the inside done. Now I'm just going to grab another brush and I'm going to do the outside of the frame as well. So I'm just going to go all around all four sides of the frame and including the underside of the outer part of the frame, if you get what I mean. I basically mean that part of the frame that sticks out further than the baseboard, that's the bit underneath. That's what I'm painting as well. There you go, as you can see. So now I need to start adding my first base colour and for that I'm going to use the Miss Money Penny Copper Metallic Paint and I'm going to use a small dry brush. I'm just going to take a little bit of the paint from the pot, put it on my craft mat and then just lightly brush the paint over the raised areas on the base of the card. So that's all the embossing, all the chipboard and all of the plaster of Paris elements. Now because this does take a while and it is kind of a laborious process because you do do it slow and it is speeded up still. Um, I am going to cut to the end so you don't have to sit through the entire process. So you've pretty much seen the full half or the right hand side done so I'm now just going to cut the video and jump towards the end. And as you can see that's the full surface of the baseboard done so I've completely highlighted all of the raised areas with that copper metallic paint. So all I need to do now is to allow that to dry and then move on to my second colour and the second colour that I'm going to add to this canvas is the Kingfisher Blue. So this is the Kingfisher Blue Metallic Paint. This is a new colour for 2016 and I'm just going to repeat the same process again. So just very, very slowly, just dry brush the metallic blue paint over the top of the copper. So this just adds a bit of a contrast, a bit of a highlight and makes it look a little bit like a verdigris effect. And because you've seen the process once, there's no need to watch it again, so I'm going to just jump to the end of the Kingfisher Blue. And as you can see, I've not gone too mad with it, I've just added it so you can still see the copper underneath, the underlying copper, so you get that two-tone effect with the two metallic paints. And now that you've seen the main board that's going into the inside of the frame, I still need to do repeat the process on the frame itself. So here's the Miss Money Penny Copper Paint again. I'm going to repeat the same process on the outside of the frame. So dry brush in exactly the same way, just over that raised embossing paste on the outside of the frame. I'm going to go all the way around and then I'm going to repeat the same process with the Kingfisher Blue. And remember that piece of paper there is only there just to stop the reflection of my camera in the glass. So that's pretty much it. Now all I need to do once the frame is finished is then add the final touch and um, Lauren who had commissioned this frame chose the word strength to go on it so I'm just using the Memento a Tuxedo Black Dual Tip Marker just to get rid of the white areas on that sticker and I'm going to add some foam pads, some 3D foam pads 
onto the bag just so it is raised up slightly. It is self-adhesive anyway, but I wanted to give it a little bit of depth, a little bit of dimension. So I'm just raising it up on three foam pads. And then I'm going to stick that down underneath the skull. So the difficult thing is making sure you get it straight. Make sure that it is as level as you can possibly get it. And then all that's left to do is to literally put the frame together. And in case you're wondering, I did clean the glass on both sides, inside and out, before I added the main baseboard back into the frame. So I got rid of as many fingerprints and grease marks off the glass as I possibly could. And there we go. All done, all the ties in, just securing the baseboard back into the back and Lauren's frame is complete. So I hope you really enjoyed watching that shadow box be created from the start right the way through to the finish. Um, Lauren is very, very happy with the shadow box. She loves it to bits. So uh, she's happy, I'm happy, and I hope you're happy too and you've enjoyed watching the video. If you have, please remember to give it a thumbs up, share the video with all your friends, and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of this video. That's all from me for now. I will see you all again real soon. Bye for now.